Hello you guys, it's Katie and welcome back to another video. Today's video I have a market vlog plus breakdown to share with you guys. So I've been doing a lot of markets recently and this time I decided to vlog one for the first time in a while. I specifically saved vlogging until this specific market because this was a brand new market for me. The previous ones I've been doing are just the same ones that I have done in the past so they're kind of the same old setup, same location like as far as where my tent is and everything. So I saved it until this time to vlog for you guys and I'm really glad that I did because this turned out to be a really good and a really fun market. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think I got some good footage for you guys as well. So I'm excited to share this vlog and then towards the end of the video, a breakdown of what sold and best sellers and all of that, of course. And just so you guys know, as always, for my market vlog breakdown videos, I will have two Google Docs linked below for you. One will be all of the items that are included in my market setup. So everything from my tent to the tables, to tablecloths, to displays, all that kind of stuff. So if you see anything in my market setup that you're like, ooh, I wonder where she got that from. I have almost all the exact items. If not, they're very similar items, a link on that Google Doc, as well as I will have a Google Doc linked below that has all the crochet patterns that I make and sell at markets linked below on it. So that will also be there for you. Now for this video, I didn't go through like I do sometimes and show you every single item that I'm bringing to the market, just because I feel like it gets so repetitive when I do that in these videos. And I just honestly didn't have the time before this market to do that. And if I'm gonna show you what's going to the market, it obviously has to be before. So I didn't do that this time, but I will still have a Google Doc linked below with all of the patterns that I brought to this market so that you can make any of these items yourself if you would like to. But with that spiel over with, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the market footage, which I do have some footage of me prepping a little bit because I did actually have some prep to do this time. And then I also have footage of the actual day of the market. So I'm gonna play all of that for you and then we'll come back to me here after the market and I will tell you what sold and what the best sellers were. I originally had some footage of me painting the crates that you can see off to the side here in this clip and for some reason the footage is not working. It must have been something with my camera. It didn't record right or something so I apologize you're not going to see that but I did just want to put in here that that footage is missing because it makes more sense for why I'm in paint clothes and then the rest that you're gonna see just makes more sense knowing that there is some footage missing so I apologize for that but we are gonna get into the rest of what I did all right guys so the next thing I'm gonna be doing might look weird <laughs> um but I have this poster board that I got at Dollar Tree and then I have my honeycomb display that I use at markets and I'm going to be tracing it out on this poster board and then cutting out the poster board and gluing the poster board to the back because I love this thing and people always compliment me on it. But if there's any sort of wind at all, the bees fly through the back or if wind comes through the back, then they fly out the front. And at almost every single market, I end up with bees on the ground because of that. So... That's why I am making this backing for it, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it will work to keep the bees in. <laughs> Alright, so I'm almost done with the second crate, the first one is over there, and then I also finished the backing for the honeycomb display. I still have these two more crates, but those are not going to get done tonight because it's midnight, and I have to get up at like 5 tomorrow morning for this market. I definitely should have started on these way beforehand, but it's okay, I'll at least have two to use tomorrow, and then for my next market I'll have all four. But... Anyways, I'm going to finish up this once I can flip it over. I have to do the bottom side. And then that'll be it for the night. 
So otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow morning once I am ready for the market to do the market vlog, of course. Good morning, you guys. It is 6.03 and I am getting stuff from up here in the yarn room, including the camera, and going to take it all down to the car. And then we'll be leaving shortly after that. Probably gonna get some Dunkin' because that's the only thing really open this early in the morning. Um, and then we'll head to the market and set up.
told you guys, so we're set up. Been about 30 minutes, haven't had any sales yet. Also right next to a popcorn vendor, so you can probably hear that. And we're also right next to the road, so probably kind of loud. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, but I'm just doing some crocheting and hopefully it'll get a little busier and some more sales will roll in. Or sales in general. I can't say more because I haven't sold anything yet. All right, you guys, so I've been a little bit distracted. It's been kind of busy now. Um, I'm up to 300 something dollars, so that's pretty good. And we have two hours left, so. Loud truck. Anyways, um, I'm gonna continue crocheting though. Okay, it's officially time to start packing up, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and of course, the next clip you guys will see will be the breakdown so you can know how it went. All right, you guys, so I am going to pull up my Square app so I can go ahead and tell you the exact transactions in order so that you get an idea of what sold first and what people were interested in. And then we'll get into what items actually sold out, what the best sellers were, all of that stuff. This market was from 9 to 2 p.m. and I was getting a little nervous because almost a full hour in I didn't have any sales and I was like um okay <laughs> and like I said this is my first time doing this market so I was a little concerned oh and I also should mention that this market was on Good Friday so I do think that affected the turnout a little bit I'm not used to doing a Friday market I'm used to Saturday or Sunday events and like I said this is a new location so I feel like if I did do this location again, it may not be as good next time because this time happened to be Good Friday, which was a holiday, so people had it off from work and from school, but it was still a good market, so I would still do it in the future, even if it wasn't a holiday, if that makes sense. But anyways, now we're going to get into the transactions in order of what sold. 
So first hour in, I was getting a little nervous because it was almost a full hour before I finally got my first sale. And I was at 9.44, so 44 minutes into the market. I finally got a sale and that was a $37 order for my jellyfish and an octopus. So the jellyfish was 25 and then the octopus that sold was 12 and specifically the octopus was the one in Burnett Baby Blanket called Mini Succulents. So it's an interesting color that has like pink, peach, blue, green, like a bunch of colors together. So that one sold with the jellyfish for that first order. And after that sale started to pick up. So next was a $12 opossum that sold. Next order was a few items. We have a $15 mini bunny, a $15 mini dog, and then a dollar worth of stickers, which for the stickers, I do three for a dollar. And the stickers are just stickers I order online and then resell, mainly because I always used to get little kids that would come up to markets and be like, I only have a dollar, do you have anything I can get for a dollar? And I would feel so bad when they couldn't get anything. So I started buying those stickers just so they could get something if they really wanted it. <laughs> Anyways, the next two orders were also stickers and they were both $3 worth of stickers. The next order after that was a $15 order. We have a B keychain for 10 and then a mini octo for five. Next order was a $30 order and that was two axolotls together. So they're 15 each. We have the green one and the light pink one that sold. Next order was my Jumbo Elephant, which was 35. I've had that for a little while, so I was excited that that sold. Next order was a $15 axolotl again, and that was the light blue colored one. Next order was a few items. We have a $15 pickle with a smile, a $15 light yellow chunky mushroom, and then a dollar worth of stickers. Next order was another $5 mini octo. Then after that was a $15 B. Next order was two items. We have a $12 leggy frog in green and then a $12 triceratops in light blue. Next order was another $15 B. Next order, you guys, I was so excited. I finally sold my corn. I've had that since September of 2022 when the corn song was trendy so I've had that for such a long time and it was only $30 so I really didn't think it was that bad so I never changed the price on it or anything and it finally sold for that $30 as well as it sold with a dollar worth of stickers so I was very very excited about that next order was another $12 octopus this time it was the blue and white one I believe that's the color that's called water slide in Burnett Blanket Brights Next, you guys, was my $35 Yoda, which I feel like once a month at markets, which I've been doing markets two to three times a month recently, so I feel like at least once a month I'm selling a Yoda. So that's pretty good, I would say, especially for a more higher-priced item. Next, you guys, we have an order for $30, and that was a $15 Rainbow Bee and a $15 Black Speckled Chicken. So the Black Speckled color is... Burnett blanket speckled in the color typewriter. Next order we have another five dollar mini octo that sold and I believe that sold me out of the mini octos at that point because I think I only had three of them and that was three of them that sold. Next two orders you guys were both for twelve dollar opossums which that sold me out of opossums at that point as well because I only had three of those. Next order was for two leggy frogs, one in mint and one in purple, and those are both $12, so that was $24 total. Next order was another chunky mushroom that sold, this time just a classic red one, and the chunky mushrooms are $15. Next order was for one of my penguins. I actually only had one at this market, and then I crocheted one as I was sitting there, so I still have one and one sold if that makes sense. So anyways, it was $14 for that penguin. Next was another item that I've had for quite a while and it finally sold and that was my $15 little peach. Next item was a $14 duck that sold. 
Next order was a chicken nugget with a happy face for $10 and then a $12 chick that sold together. Next order was another $12 chick and another black speckled chicken that sold. So again, that is the colored typewriter in Burnett Blanket speckled line. So the chicken was 15 and the chick was 12, so that was 27 together. Second to last order that I had because this was at 11.56 and the market ended at 2 was a $15 light purple axolotl which sold me out of the axolotls and then a $5 mini bee which I also made that mini bee as I was sitting there so I don't think I had any mini bees beforehand so the only reason that one sold is because I made it while I was sitting there. So that was the second to last order and the last order actually happened as we were packing up, we had somebody come up and be like, can I still look as you're packing up? And we're like, of course. So even after I recorded the after, which I don't think I recorded a before and after on my camera, so I'll have to insert the footage from my phone. But anyways, um, even after I recorded the after, how many times can I say after? Anyways, <laughs> even after I recorded the after, this order happened. So that was for a $10 dark pink gummy bear, which I was so excited about because I haven't sold a gummy bear in such a long time. Next was a light purple Triceratops for 12, an angry pickle for 15, and a straight face chicken nugget for 10. So that was a $47 order at the very last minute when we were about to pack up or were already packing up basically. So that was super awesome and that was almost my vendor fee <laughs> right there. So my vendor fee for this event was $50 and I feel like that wasn't too bad for the amount of traction it had and the size of the event and everything. I feel like $50 was pretty good. The typical events that I do every single month on the third Saturday that I'm signed up as a seasonal vendor, so I'm at the same spot and everything. That is 55 per event is what it breaks down to be for me because I signed up for all of them at once. If I signed up for each one individually, then it would have been 65 per event, which I feel like that event is pretty comparable to this one. The only difference I will say is like I was talking about towards the beginning, this was a Friday. So obviously Friday versus Saturday, I'm gonna have a little bit of different traction at least in my mind because most people work monday through friday but this was good friday so people had off so and i did see a lot more kids than i expected because again good friday most kids at least in this area have off school for good friday so because of that i think that helped and then also this time of year some kids are still on spring break and this town is a little bit more of a touristy town because it is on the water and it is kind of a retirement town, so a lot of people that retire there have their grandkids come visit them for spring break. And because of that, we also noticed a lot of like grandparents walking around with their grandkids and stuff like that. So I think all of that combined made this a really good market, even if it typically wouldn't be like as packed as that, just because, like I said, a holiday, so people had off in general or they head off because it was spring break where they're from. So with all of that being said, I think this was a really good market for all of those reasons. And let's go to my reports so I can tell you guys exactly how much I sold. So my total that I made for this market, drum roll please, was $607, which is the most that I've made at a market in a long time. I think it's the most I've made at a market this year, as in 2024. I did pretty good last season at some of my markets that were like fall themed. I want to say the one that I did that was two days that I vlogged and then did a full breakdown for you guys. I want to say that one I made $600 each day. And that was a Saturday and a Sunday. So that's still to date my best market that I've had. But I will say a market that was only 9 to 2 
$600 is pretty good and then a $50 vendor fee so pretty good and let me subtract that for you guys so that we actually have an idea of how much I made minus that vendor fee so 607 minus the $50 is $557 once you minus the vendor fee now I still don't ever go through and minus the material cost and stuff like that because I I just don't I'm not good about all that kind of stuff so I apologize if there's any of you that are like I'd love to see that part of it I would love to do that at some point but I just don't know if or when that will happen maybe one day I don't know maybe one day I'll get really scientific with my breakdowns and actually subtract the material cost and everything but I'd say about one third of my cost when it comes to each item is materials so if we do the math on that then like two thirds of that is profit if that makes sense so I'm gonna do the math on that really quick just because I'm curious so the I did 66 percent times the $557 that I made once you minus the vendor fee and that is $367.62 so if I had to guess that's around how much I actually took home from this market once you subtract the vendor fee and the material cost that's just my guesstimate of about one third maybe it's less than that maybe it's more like one fourth I have raised my prices a little bit recently so it might even be closer to one fourth of my product price is material cost. But like I said, I'm not 100% sure because I don't ever really scientifically break it down. Just because I always think it's interesting to tell you guys this part of the breakdown, I had almost exactly 50-50 between cash and card. I had $313 in cash and then $294 on card at this event. And I paid $9.03 in fees to Square for using them to charge people's cards. Now, as far as the best sellers or like top sellers, I guess I should say, basically how much I made off of different items, the most I sold for sure was axolotls because I sold four of those and those were for 15 each so I made $60 off of axolotls. The next most that I sold was a three-way tie for three different items because I sold three of each of them <laughs> and that is three bees, three frogs, and three opossums. So specifically for the bees I made $45 because those are 15 each then for the frogs and the opossums, I made 36 off of both of them because they're 12 each. The next most that I made was another tie between the elephant and the Yoda because I charged 35 for both of those. But those were only one-off items that, again, I only sold one of. And then I also had pickles that I sold two of and I made $30 off of those. Also had chickens that I sold two of, made $30 off of those, and chunky mushrooms that I sold two of and made $30 off of them because all those items are 15 each. So that kind of gives you the breakdown of what the top sellers were and how much I made off of those top sellers. So specifically items that sold out for me were opossums, axolotls, I also had mini bees technically sell out because I only had the one that I made during the market and that sold out as well as my mini octos sold out I had three of those and they all sold so those are ones that sold out even though the minis didn't come up on the list as like the top that's because I didn't make the most off of them because they're only five dollar items but those are items that sold out for me as well so that is officially all for this breakdown video you guys I hope you enjoyed now I want to tell you two things first off I will have one or two more breakdown videos for you guys 
or I should say breakdown slash vlog videos for you guys for the rest of my season. We'll see. I'm thinking probably two more because I've been filming one of these videos per month and I have April and May markets. So I'm really excited about those. I have just two markets in April that are ones I've done in the past before. So I'll decide between which one of those I want to bring you guys to. And then May is my really big horror comic con that I'm so excited about. So I'll definitely be bringing you guys along for that, for that weekend that I am selling at that event. And then of course the full on breakdown and everything. So that will be very exciting. And then once my season is over, that one is officially my last one of the season. I was supposed to have one the following weekend, but I'm having to cancel it because I'm getting my tonsils removed like three days <laughs> after that Comic-Con. But anyways, after all of that, and then after I have recovered from my tonsil surgery as well, so probably like very end of May, if not early June, you guys will see a full video where I go through every single market that I had this season and I break down how much I made at the event, what setup I used at the event, so as far as my like formation for the tables, how I think that affected things, how I think weather or environment things affected the event, just all kinds of stuff. For a full-on breakdown for more so I want to do it for myself anyway as like a recap for what events I would like to do again next season because they really went well for me or which ones I would like to cut out of my schedule because they didn't go so well for me um or ones that I think I could improve my market displays and market setup and see if it goes better next time all of that kind of stuff I'm planning on doing a full video on as kind of a season recap, especially since I started doing more markets and I didn't vlog every single one of them like I've done last year's season. I want to still go through those ones that I didn't actually film for you guys and do a full on like breakdown of how it went. And I plan on making a spreadsheet for myself and everything so that I have an idea of my profit margin from each market and all of that jazz. So if you do actually want to see that video, I'm planning on making it, but I haven't made it yet, of course. So if you do actually want to see that video, let me know. I think it'll be interesting and it's definitely something I could do every year at the end of my season if it's something you guys are interested in. Now what I will say is my typical season for the outdoor events and everything ends in May because it gets really hot. So. May is when it's happening this year but I will still have a few events like straggling over the summer and stuff that won't be my typical market season but I will still have those going on as well so it's not like I'm completely done with markets until next October when my regular markets start back it's just the big markets I'm done with until then if that makes sense so Anyways, now that I have rambled on for so long, you guys, <laughs> thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate you being here as always. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed. It really helps out the algorithm. When you give it a thumbs up, it pushes it out to more people. More people that are hopefully interested in doing markets or selling their crochet in general can find these videos and learn from me and from my mistakes and hopefully be steered in the right direction because I definitely wish I had this kind of stuff to watch before I started selling at markets myself. Now, if you did enjoy this video and you wanna see more like this, let me know in the comments below your thoughts. Let me know if you're selling at any markets coming up soon, if you've sold at any markets recently. All market things I would love to chat about in the comments with you guys, so go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And if you enjoyed and you wanna make sure you don't miss out on, like I said, probably at least two more market vlogs for my season as well as the full market breakdown for how my season went coming in the near future make sure you hit the subscribe button on my channel and you can turn on the post notification bell that way you know every single time i post a brand new video here to my channel and if you guys do want to see more from me of course you can check out more videos of mine my blog which has free crochet patterns my etsy shop and my Rimbler shop which have more crochet patterns all of my social medias which are at katie being creative and of course my second channel that I don't post on very often but 
every now and again I do so if you want to see that you can also check that out all of that's included in the description box below as well as like I mentioned at the beginning of today's video I'll have the two Google Docs one with all of the market setup as well as the other one with all of the crochet patterns linked below for you guys so with all of that thank you all so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys here in the next one goodbye